Hey, what is going on guys? My name is Grief Drums and today we are going to be taking a look at some of the uh, Elite BDU skins, the character customization, and pretty much that entire aspect of the game. This is something that I've been waiting for a really long time. Obviously in the Red Crow they said they were going to add it, so we're going to take a look at all of that in today's video. Okay, so with the addition of Sledge, Capcan and Thermite all getting Elite BDU skins, um, some of the other operators have also got new uniforms that they can wear and this is something I've been looking forward to for so long. It looks awesome on some of them and it is really well done, but I've got to be honest, I'm not 100% sold on all of them. Now this entire video is just going to be my opinion. Um, I'm not criticising. Please don't misunderstand me, I am not moaning. This is not what this is about. This is merely just me saying I'm a little bit concerned. First up, we're going to take a look at Sledge's uniform. Now, Sledge's new Elite BDU skin, it's probably the better of the three. It's still not great. I don't understand why he would wear this. It doesn't really fit with the rest of the game, in my opinion. But it is bearable. It's not one of those things that I'm going to just cry about. It's, it's something that I could deal with, you know? It doesn't upset me. He does seem a lot bigger, so I don't know how that affects his hitbox, whether that increases his hitbox as well. But um, on the whole, it's not too bad. Capcans again is the same. I don't really understand why he's got the blue and white striped uh, clothing on underneath. That seems to be like pretty bright in comparison to the desert uniform that he's wearing. But it's not too bad. It still looks like Capcan. Both of these so far seem to be very Battlefield 1. Uh, it's very World War 1-esque and it just seems like they've, they've copied that because it's new and it's big in it at the moment. Thermite's uniform is the one for me that really sort of annoyed me. Um, I don't know why. It's, it's stupid. It shouldn't. It's, it doesn't affect the gameplay in any way, shape or form, but it just detracts a little bit from the game for me. And this is purely because of the fact that he looks like something out of the YMCA. Uniforms done right are more like the SAS uniforms that have been added in. Um, they've got over, a set of overalls that are like a beige sort of colour, which are perfect for if you're playing on border or something like that. You can really sort of blend into the environment. And they've also got the camo, the British DPM camo from, you know, I think the 95 pattern it is. That looks really cool. It's in keeping with the game. It works. It makes sense. The World War One thing doesn't really work for me. I don't get why it's been added in, you know. Why would operators be carrying this stuff around? Surely they would want to use the latest tech, not the old defunct kit that was used a hundred years ago. I mean, what is that about? Now, I understand the argument it doesn't affect gameplay at all. No, it doesn't. It really doesn't affect gameplay. But it does detract from how you see the game. If some dude in World War One attire comes running towards you, that is a little bit dodgy when you're trying to play a tactical game. For me, Rainbow Six Vegas did it right. Rainbow Six Vegas 2 was awesome. You know, they, they did the customization as well as could be. Um, don't get me wrong, there were issues with that. I mean, that weird face cam thing that you used to be able to put on. Um, and you used to be able to utilize pink camos and light blues and light greens and that was too far It was just stupid. Everyone started using that for some reason But um, on the whole being able to change the kind of shoulder pads that people were using or the the elbow pads The knee pads all that kind of kit the assault vest, you know the chest rig having an assault vest that comes down here or one that just you know has pouches across the top or you can have like different pouches different places that's the kind of customization that I really want to see in the game. I'm not too fussed about wearing, you know, tartan things across Sledge. I, I don't really see the need for that. I'd love it if I could buy a new chest rig or, a, you know, a new set of, of knee pads, for Christ's sake, with, with shin guards on the front so your character could slide. After Googling the hell out of this, I found that uh, there were these concept drawings, originally for Rainbow Six, which showed, you know, IQ, it showed Bandit, Ash, uh, and also the, the white masks, the terrorists that you play on, on Terrorist Hunt. Some of these are awesome. Now, this is the kind of customization I want to see. You know, I want to be able to change the, the jeans that IQ's wearing from light blue to dark blue. I want to be able to change the hats that they're wearing. I, I'm not really fussed about these face masks that aren't in keeping with the game, like the luchador mask that Twitch can wear. What What is that about? You know, why would she be wearing a wrestling mask? I know you could argue that, yeah, okay, the game is supposed to be realistic, and on the other side of the coin, people will say, Bandit carries three car batteries in his pocket. Frost carries a load of briefcase, briefcase in her pocket that just appear out of nowhere. I get it. It's a game. And it's also a game that the devs need to get money for in order to keep new content coming for us this next season. I totally understand that. But let's do it in a way that is in keeping with the game. Let's do it in a way that fits. I really like the addition of the dust line, the skull rain, all the different coloured uh, headgears and skins for that. 
A perfect example is if you're playing yacht, frost gear and bucks gear, that works there because they blend into their environment. It makes sense, it's their map. Um, the same with Dustline, you know, on Border. Blackbeard and Valkyrie both play very well on that map and they both blend into that map because of the uniforms that they're wearing. That is the point of camouflage uniforms. So I really like the ability to be able to change Sledge's outfit to, you know, a beige BDU to fit in with that. And if I'm playing on, you know, the yacht, I'd like to be able to change it to sort of a, a white or an urban coloured one with lots of greys and things like that. So that'll let me hide and blend in a little bit better on that map. I know they've been waiting to push this stuff out for year two, but previously, Twitch would have like a white headgear on and a black uniform, and it was just like a glowing beacon. Shoot here, shoot here. Speaking of glowing beacons, what the fuck is this about? Capital's like neon mask. I mean, God, that is like a beacon. Or Jaeger's headgear, Jaeger's bright orange helmet. Why would you wear this? The thing that really got my back up with all of this is the emotes. Now. I don't get them. I understand why they would be cool and how they could be cool. You know, the, the first place winner gets to do something with their character. And it'd be nice if you could have like five or six to choose from. Sledge's one is actually pretty cool. You know, he spins his, like, his mace around or his hammer um, and eventually sort of does a huge swing. And that's pretty sweet. But since when does Thermite do magic? What is that about? It is something that concerns me. You know, if the first ones we get are this stupid, how bad are they going to get? You know, with the headgears when they first started, most of them were pretty cool. Most of them were realistic, they were understandable. Blitz is one is a perfect example. A lot of operators in other countries actually do utilize these kind of masks to intimidate and strike fear into people and terrorists when they're raiding a building. Blitz is the perfect example of this. Rook's also got a pretty good clown one. These are kind of in keeping. They are about as far as I can go. You know, I wouldn't want to go any more stupid than these, but they make sense. If you've ever played Army of Two, you'd understand that. You know, if a mad clown came bursting in with a shield and started shooting at you, you'd be shitting yourself. Pulse with his blindfold, however, that doesn't make any sense. That That's just too far for me. And I know it's a game. I get it's a game. Things like Frost, what is this? Seriously, what is this? This is like the worst headgear I've ever seen. Does anyone actually use this? What do you think of the customizations? What do you think of the operator uniforms, the headgears, the emotes? Are they something that you're interested in? Have you got the Mortal Kombat Thermite or have you not bothered with it? Would you be willing to pay your own money to get these or do you want to see something better that you would pay money for? Something more in keeping with the game? Let me know down in the comments below. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I know it's been a little bit negative, but hey, what do you expect when you release skins like that? Until next time, guys, stay reckless and relentless.